Oh, nice. I didn't see. No, you're good. I didn't see the PGA logo on the shirt before. Is that because the jack? Oh, yeah. Nice, nice touch. I love it. So I guess that's, that's a good place to start because um, you and I know we tried just a second ago, but it didn't quite go through. So let's just start from the beginning. You obviously have a PGA logo on your shirt. Why don't, uh, why don't you give a little bit of a background about who you are, and, and then we'll dive into a little bit about the program you just went through and inspire some others to do the same. Okay, well, I'm Chuck De Silva. I'm a PGA pro at uh, Rock Creek Country Club. Been there for 18, 19 years already. Um, 53 years old and still enjoy competing and, you know, still want to do so as long as I can. That's awesome, Chuck. And for those that are watching that don't know, you are one of the most active members in the Oregon chapter PGA. You play in everything and you play really great golf. And when you and I were talking, especially early in the program, the goal was to create the habits and the routines to be able to continue to play golf. Uh, before we get into all that, I'd, I'd love for you to share a little bit of what your tournament routine looks like, especially for somebody watching who does play some competitive golf and would love to kind of get inside the mind of a, of a pro like yourself who does that. Well, what do you mean by kind of routine? Just what I go no, through? I, well, I guess for right now, like your tournament schedule each year, what, what typically are you doing? How many rounds are you play, and, and what does that look like? Uh, you know, I, I would say – I don't, I definitely don't play in everything because that'd be way too much to do um, or not enough time, but uh, I definitely play my fair share, quite a few pro-ams, you know, both uh, senior and regular and then a few tournaments here from our chapter and a section tournament here, or there's as well. So, you know, I'm probably, I, I'm, I'm staying pretty busy, you know, every week might have a one day or sometimes a two day, you know, event going on so that yeah that's a pretty good schedule awesome and when you're playing especially with that much what are some of the obstacles that you're running into that are preventing you from playing more or especially like when we've talked about like 36 whole events what does that look like for you so i say probably in the last few years um definitely start to feel a little bit more soreness stiffness um, you know, after you play or during your play. Um, and I think, yeah, so on multi-round events, it's, it's, it's a struggle. I can't, I, I found out that I haven't been able to practice as much as I'd like, um, whether it's after the round or in between rounds. So that's, that's kind of where I feel like I'd like to uh, improve in those, in those areas so I can practice more and, um, you know, not feel as bad uh, after, you know, multiple rounds. That's awesome. And so when we first started working together, uh, you know, one of the things that we were talking about is building those routines. And so that, you know, just like brushing your teeth, it's okay, let's do a couple of different exercises or different stretches each day just to kind of build that momentum. And we started to see some changes in your body and on the mental side as well. We'll get into the mental side in a moment, but I'd love to hear from your perspective what started to happen in those six weeks just with you know, you've been one of the most consistent people with getting through, especially like the power warm up that we do every morning. I think you said that you've done like 40 or 41 out of the 42 days with the exception of like when you were uh, on, on vacation and, and you were, even then you were still good about getting to it. There may have been a day that you missed, but that consistency is such a big part of it. But I'd love to hear in your words, what started to happen and what started to change as you were starting to incorporate those practices into your day. I would definitely say the best thing about this program that's helped me is, is establishing those routines and habits um, um, and, you know, committing to them and doing them. So I would, I would say that's, that's probably on the top of the list for sure. And, you know, hopefully I've built, um, you know, these habits and routines now that I can just continue building on them from now on that I won't just, you know, stop next week or I'll, I'll, I'll do something and it might change and that's fine. Maybe it's going to be instead of, you know, doing all those exercises, maybe it's going to be go practice for an hour or two, go hit a couple buckets of balls and, or something like that. So just, just getting those routines and habits, the good habits formed. I think that's, that's, that's my greatest positive with this, with this program that, that I've gone through. 
Yeah. That's awesome. And I love what you just said there, Chuck. You just you just had a really powerful statement right there, whether you, you I know I caught it for sure, which was, you know, what we've talked about in the program is that routines do fluctuate over time depending on what your goals and what your vision are. And so what we establish today may not necessarily look like what we establish down the road, yet the framework for those routines is all the same. And it sounds like you have a really good understanding now of like, okay, if it's the off season and I'm spending more time with family, maybe my life looks like this, but now springtime's coming around, we have some majors coming up and now our routines change. What's been the most effective piece in implementing such consistency on your end? What have you really seen as what's worked? Or has there been something throughout your day that has really clicked of like, that's the one thing that you have to do or that, that really makes the most difference, that one domino that you tip over that gets the rest to fill? Um, well, maybe a couple of things, but, you know, having the glass of water in the morning and not having the coffee until, you know, usually, usually until I at least do, I just make sure at least I do the power warm up. And even if I had to go through it, maybe a little faster, maybe not as diligent as I should have, at least I did it. And that's, you know, some days are going to be okay. And some days are going to be, you know, you'll be able to have more time to put into it. But I think so. I don't know. It might be just, you know, what tips it, it's got to be like, like you and I talked about, it's got to come from within. I had to make that decision that I'm going to do this. I'm going to stick with it. And, you know, now that I have, it's, it, it'd be very difficult to stop now. I think it's just kind of, it's become a habit. So that's, that was the whole goal. So, you know, I'm looking forward to continuing on. That's so awesome, Chuck. And that is absolutely the goal. It's just let's lay the framework, let's lay the foundation. Because now, whatever it is, mm -hmm. golf, non-golf, you can move forward towards it. Uh, but one of the things you just touched on there, which I think is so cool, is that you said, obviously, you know, we're human. Days fluctuate. There's so many variables. No two days are ever going to be the same. And yet, because of the structure, we continue to move forward. But as you and I, as, as pros of the game, both know a lot of what goes on on the golf course parallels life. Have you noticed any difference in your game and just visualizing your way around the course and course management or reactions to shots or anything like that through any of the like breath work practices or journaling practices or anything that we've done in the program? How has that translated over into the game? Well, to be honest, I haven't played too much, but I have played a few times. And, you know, they've been positive. I sometimes I'm more aware now of how I react and kind of how I'm breathing maybe and just kind of how I'm carrying myself. Um, you know, I've always heard people talk about that and sometimes it was a little more difficult for me. But, you know, time will tell. Uh, you know, when I start competing and playing more, we'll, we'll see how, you know, I'll be able to continue it and, and keep it going in a positive manner. Now let's touch on something here because you may not have played that much, but I played a round with you and something very special happened during that round. And, and the highlight, I want you to share it, but the highlight was what you told me in the parking lot after the round about your decision on the ninth hole. So I'd love to hear a little bit about what that round looked like and, and what happened there. Well, it was a baby step, but yes, um, usually I, I've had problems, struggle maybe. My Achilles a little bit is off the tee. So uh, we played nine holes and I, I had birdied, what, six, seven, and eight, and we're going to the ninth hole. Um, and instead of my usual take a three iron and just play kind of safe, I said, you know, hey, just let it go and try to just keep swinging like you have been. And and hit your driver and and I did and led to a positive outcome and you know made be able to make another birdie there on the last hole so you know that that was that's even though it's kind of in a fun game it's a good step in the right direction and you know that's hopefully I can just keep building on that that was for me it was might not seem like a big deal to others but for me I felt like it was a good a good stepping stone yeah, I think that's so amazing there. And one of the things that we talk about is how we have to believe to achieve. 
It's not like, oh, I'm just going to all of a sudden go four birdies in a row and then, oh, look what I can do. It was like, wow, I believe that I can do this. And even though there's this hesitation and even though I might fail, and especially you and I know in the game of golf, like one bad tee shot doesn't necessarily mean bogey. It could be a double or a triple. And then it's like, we just threw away that three under. And yet you were like, no, I know I can do this. And I have to prove to myself what it's like to be in that situation. And it ended up happening. I mean, what an incredible experience. So what does that do for you moving forward into the tournament season and how it raises the ceiling? And what is that going to mean for you next time you go out and play competitively? Well, golf is so much confidence, right? I mean, if you're, you're feeling confident, you know, you'll, you'll do, you usually do well. So, you know, that's, like I said, that's a good stepping stone is something hopefully I won't forget and can always look back on and say, Hey, you know, you can do it, you know, keep, keep, keep moving forward instead of uh, protecting, you know, that's, that's probably not a good thing to do when you're, you're out there golfing. Awesome. I love that. And one of the things I want to ask you here, as you know, one of the very first things that we did in the program before we even got started officially at the pre-training was six weeks ago, you wrote a letter to yourself. It was a private letter. I, I still don't know exactly what it said, and that's totally fine. We don't have to share that. But you looked into the future and you said, this is the person I'm trying to become, the vision I have. And from that perspective, you wrote yourself a letter to that present moment. Well, now, here we are six weeks later. I'd love to hear from the horse's mouth, if you will, what would you say to yourself back then, six, seven weeks ago, as you were getting started? And now that you've seen what's happened, what would you say to encourage yourself to go forward and, and just keep going? What I would say to myself being here now, looking back, is what you're saying? <clears throat> Good question. Um, I would probably say, you know, six weeks goes by pretty quick. And, it, you know, and where I might have th thought back then, it's, it just could be quite a challenge that it, it, you know, it wasn't. I mean, it, it had it had its moments being difficult where I had to push a little but not too much. It was, you know, I, once I committed to it, that was the key. You know, once I said, I'm going to do it, I, you know, I did it. So that's, that's a big positive. That's awesome. And what, what is that perspective you now have of, you know, six weeks? It, it, oh my gosh. Like I just, I remember six, seven weeks ago, like just like yesterday, we were sitting at a coffee shop talking and just all of a sudden here goes two months almost. It happens pretty amazing. What does that do, not just in this context, but just in general of like seize the moment? What does that mean now to you? I mean, yeah, you know, it's it just gives you a lot of self self confidence and and knowing that you can you know you can go through with it. You know, something that might have been a little daunting at, when you first took it on. So, um, yeah, I mean. Just, just very, uh, yeah, it makes you feel good. And now, speaking of time going by quick, we only have a couple more weeks left in the year. And as you know, I don't necessarily like New Year's resolutions. I believe if there's something that we want to do and we believe in ourselves, we just go ahead and do it, just like you did. But that being said, I, I do want to know, and we can declare to the world, what is 2020 going to look like for Chuck De Silva? Where are you going to be this time next year? And you know, we think six weeks goes by quick, but so does a year. And just before you know it, we're going to be here next year, having just celebrated Thanksgiving. Where are you going to be come that time? Well, I'm going to be continuing my routines. Hopefully positive, I will. And, uh, you know, I hope whatever I do, and whatever happens, I can look back and, you know, be – be content and happy with the effort I put into whatever I'm doing and, you know, whatever outcome, if I'm, if I'm doing this routine and doing something that's trying to make myself better, that's the journey. Then we'll just keep moving forward and keep, you know, success will come with it. Yeah. Goals of they'll, they'll come with it as long as I keep, keep working on myself. That's amazing. 
I have just a couple more questions here to wrap up. If you were to talk to somebody else who is on the fence, maybe somebody's watching this and they're not sure if the program's right for them, what would you say? I'd say, <clears throat> I'd say you should, you should do it just, just for the mere fact that it's just gonna, it's just gonna help you set up some good habits for yourself and routines that, you know, you can adjust as you go, but at least you'll, you'll be more aware of it. And, um, you know, that, that can only, that can only help you. So I would definitely recommend someone to, you know, just for that. And there's so much more that I'm not even touching on, you know, with the, with the mental side, the breathing, uh, the, the work with the group. Um, there's a lot of neat things going on that, uh, you know, but but for me, that the, the biggest positive was it was probably building a, a good routine in the morning because before my mornings were who knows what I did. You know, it was just kind of probably wasted time. Now I say, wow, I can I can get up, I can get this done, and still have time for a little breakfast and out the door and head to work. So that's it, that's been that's been the best for me. That is so amazing. Thank you, Chuck. You and as as a final thought here, do you have any last words of wisdom in any regard? Now is a great opportunity to just get your voice out to the world. What do you, how do you want to end, and what do you want to share? Uh, no, I just I just want to um, share my gratitude and 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 you know, Blaine, it's great. It was great to to meet you, and get to know you, and and go through your program, and. Yeah, I recommend it to anyone and, and it's, it's definitely helped me. And, and, you know, I, I thank you for that. You know, this, this could be big life changing. It, I mean, it is, it is. And I, I hope I will keep moving forward with it. So thank you. Well, thank you, Chuck. I appreciate you being a part of it and showing up and, and going through the work and, and just knowing the value that you provide to yourself. And like we talked about very early on, you know, it comes from nobody else but you and you did the work and you stayed consistent. And that's why I feel comfortable now because I know no matter what happens, you got it. But that's always the goal is that you are able to continue forward, which is so powerful. And to take those lessons and then share them with your family and with your kids and with the students you work with and the members at the club and just be an inspiration and be a true leader, which is really powerful and really special. So I thank you for showing up and being there and it's a really powerful thing and i'm looking forward to the next time i'm swinging by oregon and we're going to get a couple more rounds of that sounds good awesome. thanks good. so much chuck i'll talk to you soon talk to you soon Bye. Bye. Thanks.